back from the part of Virginia I was from, you know, real rural coal mining. You didn't get to experience much in the way of culture. It was really quiet and easy living, but you just had nothing to experience. When something like the internet came along, it really changed things and opened things up a lot. If you can't be there, you can at least see it or read about it. It was just different perspectives and, and whole different outlooks on life. Over several years of talking to people online, there were some of them that actually helped me out, told me, why don't you move out this way? There'll be more opportunities for you. They decided to send me some money and basically just said, move. I was elated and at the same time terrified. Mom. I'm going away for a while. I'm going to be going to uh, Washington. I could see that it bothered her that I would be moving so far away. But at the same time, she was really supportive. The first call we got was in the afternoon. I remember it clearly. It seems so strange to get that particular type of call on that day. We don't get a lot of sun here in the Pacific Northwest. So you notice it when it's a nice sunny day. It makes you very happy. And that particular call made me very unhappy. So at some point I said, is this a bestiality case? Is that what you're trying to tell me? And he said, yes. And I said, so what do you need us to do? Before I even had the concept of being zoo, I had a feeling that a traditional family life was something that I would never do. I don't need a high level of emotional interaction, whether it be human or otherwise. I function fine, I think. You could probably ask three zoos and get three different definitions. I guess the main thing would be someone that feels they have a whole lot closer affinity to non-human animals than their own kind. That doesn't necessarily exclude caring for fellow humans and friends in the same way. We talk to quite a few people all over the world via the internet. Unfortunately, most of the people that uh, were part of our little group were white, but we did have quite a few other friends who were black. There was a uh, Hispanic uh, that came out uh, to visit once, actually a couple of times. I talked to people out of Poland and Germany and Japan. 
I even talk to um, soldiers that are currently in Iraq. This gives them a chance to kind of connect back with the, the old world that uh, they knew back here. Even if it's the same old world that sent them over there to survive that environment. I worked for the same guy since I was 23. He's a member of the National Horse Association. He has some uh, top quality show Arabs. I do the maintenance. I get paid good. Clean stalls. His tractor break down or manure spreader break down or something like that. He was gone all the time. He's going back and forth from the west coast to the east coast because he's building a new home and a ranch back. If you could grab all the mail and put it in there, I'd appreciate it. Also keep the horse. They were my so-called friends for 20-some years. When this broke loose, the last thing he said to me, he told me I was a very bad person. We were friends for all those years, and all of a sudden, I'm no good just because I love the horses. On the bus, I've spent a lot of time in thought. Why am I this way? There has to be a purpose. That part, I don't know yet. Trying to balance religion and being zoo, a lot of that is faith. Growing up Baptist in a fairly religious household, I held certain beliefs to my heart. God doesn't hate anyone. You treat your fellow man right. You don't hurt other people. And for the most part, you'll, you'll, you'll be okay. I always treated my animals as part of my family. They ate before I did. Look at the videos that they took of the horses. They, they look neglected? No. It's the love of animals. That's what Zoo Philly is. It's just like if you love your wife or your kids. It's the same thing. I took better care of my animals than I ever did care of myself. Look at me. I'm, well, here I am going to be 53.